set that from 350 to 500. CPU power duty control is your next function. You have T-Probe or Extreme. When you're overclocking, based on what currents your system needs, you might want to change that from T-Probe to Extreme. CPU power phase control is our next option. And of course we have Auto Standard, Optimized and Extreme. Now we're getting down to our DRAM controls after that. Now, of course, this is for the, uh, the power phase, of course, is your phase changing. You know, the different phases of your VRM on, on where you're going to go and how the computer is going to be, uh, the CPU is going to be utilized and the motherboard. So that's the, fa the phase control basically will, set, will give you the opportunity to optimize it, set it to extreme where you're going to get higher voltages. Now, one thing about this if you are going to use that and you are going to set it on make sure you have some extra cooling over your VRM the VRM on this syst on these systems and this includes not only the ASUS boards but MSI Gigabyte etc and Intel when you start you putting some extra voltage into that VRM it's going to heat up fast and you're going to need extra cooling so now we'll go down to our DRAM voltage, uh, DRAM, and of course you have current capability for that. I have it set to 100%. It does go up to uh, 130%. Same thing as adjusting your uh, current capabilities for your CPU or your VC, VCCSA. DRAM voltage frequency, auto and manual. If you set it to manual, it's going to give you the same type of frequencies that you're, you would see on the CPU's fixed frequency. Then you're also going to have a phase control. Auto, optimized, and extreme. Based on what you're looking for, based on how your system's performing, you're going to want to play with those to see what is going to give you the optimal performance for the type of tuning that you're looking for. And the next two are the same as the first. It's just basically the first two DRAM banks are A and B and then the last two DRAM banks are C and D. As we go down a little bit further, we're going to see the CPU ratio, which is set to auto. With the Sandy Bridge systems, the second generation Core i i systems, they are kind of shunning you away from using your multiplier as for performance tuning. So basically, keep this set to auto, and go ahead and adjust the clock speeds or not the clock speeds, but your uh, multiplier on your turbo. Enhanced Intel speed step technology. When you when you are overclocking, you're going to want to shut. You're going to want to disable that. Of course, turbo mode should always be enabled. I usually leave the turbo mode parameter set to auto. Going down further. We come to our CPU core voltage. There are a couple settings here. You have offset mode, which would be plus or minus, and you have manual mode. When you set it to manual mode, you could then set your voltage that you're going to need based on what type of performance tuning you would like to see. As I said with this board, I needed 1.49 to actually make it stable throughout at 4.9 gigahertz. Same thing with the VCCSA voltage. You have two modes, offset, which will be plus or minus, or the manual mode, and then you can set your voltages from there. I normally set it to manual, but I leave it at auto. DRAM voltage, depending on what your RAM's voltage is, of course this is going to default to 1.5. You're gonna want to set your DRAM voltages per the spec on your DRAM for whatever megahertz you're going to run it at. CPU PLL voltage can be changed, VTT CPU voltage can be changed, PCH voltage, and as we keep on going down there are a lot of other voltages for 
for reference voltages on channel A, channel B, channel C, channel D of your memory. I usually leave everything here set to auto. I have not found any need on a Sandy Bridge system yet to start changing any of those frequencies. Auto usually seems to be the best. CPU spread spectrum and PCIe spread spectrum. They are now on auto. When you are performing tuning, you want to disable them. So that leads us to our advanced, our advanced tab. Of course, we have our CPU configuration, which is basically the same as what we saw in the AI tweaker, but it gives you a couple more options. We have thermal monitor, hyper threading, active processor cores, of course, all or one through five, limit CPU ID maximum, execute disable bit, and enter Intel virtualization technology. When we get down to the bottom, CPU power management configuration, of course we got our CPU ratio again as we saw in the last one. But what this does is it also shows us the Intel speed step technology which we need to disable or we would like to disable one more performance tuning. Turbo mode again is always enabled and your C, your C uh, states. These I would disable when I am performance tuning. System aging configuration basically shows you what your lanes are going to be for your PCIe links and their speeds and as you can see this is ready for Gen 3. PCH configuration, basically high precision timer, I leave that enabled. SATA configuration, this will allow you to set up your SATA configuration to AHCI mode, SATA, RAID, ID, <coughs> smart status check, usually leave that enabled. One thing you might want to do when you're performance tuning or using an SSD is to enable the hot plug. You do see a little bit better performance out of it, out of your, uh, out of your SSD when that is set to hot plug. So going back, we get to the USB configuration, of course, legacy USB support, legacy USB 3.0 support and EHCI handoff. I usually keep that disabled. Onboard device configuration. On this specific board we have as LEH the audio front panel type which is HD, SP, DIF out, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi controller. This is the deluxe board. It does have both Bluetooth 3.0 and Wi-Fi built onto it via a module. Intel LAN PXE Opera, Realtek LAN controller, of course we have our our PCI Express X1 which is in Bluetooth mode and eSATA mode. Our AS Media controller, USB controller would be next. This also has a Marvell storage controller. Now, the Marvell storage controller is what you're going to need to enable if you choose to use Asus SSD caching. Later on in the review, if you're reading the review, I do have a video on how to use the SSD caching. And of course the storage controller for your AS Media, which I leave in AHCI mode of course, and next would be your APM. And this is basically how you want how you want to set your settings for your PCI, PCIe, etc. when it goes into different states after power failure. Under monitor, monitor will show the CPU temperatures, motherboard temperatures, fan speeds, chassis fan speeds, and as we come down we will see that we could also set Q fan controls. You can either disable or enable it. It's going to show you your CPU speed low limit. You could set that. You could ignore it or set it to a minimum of 600. I usually keep mine running at 600. CPU fan profile. 
is you can set the standard silent turbo or manual. Once you send it to manual, it's going to tell you what the it's going to ask you what you would like your different span, fan speeds to be based on your temperatures. Chassis Q fan enabled, chassis Q, Q fan low limit, chassis 2 fan profiles, and then we just go down between different profiles, etc. Now, when we come down to the bottom, you'll see the CPU voltage the 3 volt rails, 5 volt rails, and 12 volt rails. If you are performance tuning, you're going to want to shut anti-surge support off. Next tab will be our boot tab. You have a boot up number lock state. I usually leave that on. Full screen logo. I like to see it post screen, so I'd rather keep that off, so I disable it. Wait for F1 or error, enabled. Post report. I usually set that to 5 seconds. You can set it from one second to ten or until you press escape. So it'll it'll actually show your postcodes for a certain amount of seconds. Option run mes messages, force bios, and of course setup mode, which would basically be the advanced mode which we're in now or the easy mode which we started this which we started this off with. When we come down to our boot options, we can see that our boot options right here shows what we have and what we would like to boot first. Right now I have a wildfire, Patriot Wildfire SSD in here, and I also have an Asus Blu-ray drive. Then our next tabs would be our boot options for CD-ROMs, hard drive priorities, and of course our boot override. And of course, as you can see, you have your option to override either the either the hard drive or the Blu-ray drive. One good thing about this BIOS, and before I forget, if you have a USB disk that is a, a USB uh, drive or a flash drive that is compatible, if you hit F12, now as you can see, I have a Kingston in there. What it'll do is it'll take a screenshot of your settings for you. So it'll take the screenshot, transfer it to your uh, flash drive, and now if you forget to save your settings, you could always go back and look at what your settings were via the screenshot. I'll go ahead and next that out. And last but not least, we have our tools. The Asus Easy Flash Utility. Basically, if you have Set a, set a new BIOS, you want to put them on there, put them on your flash drive, plug in your flash drive, go into ASUS Easy Flash, and within seconds you'll, you'll update your BIOS. ASUS DRAM SPD information. This is going to tell you if your memory is working correctly. If there are any errors, it will tell you errors. And then what you might want to do if you have an error is go ahead and hit the Mem OK button and it might fix the errors for you. But if we go ahead and click on that, we can see what our JDEC spec is on this. Now, this memory that I have here is probably a pre-production model. Well, actually, it is a pre-production model of the memory. Of course, it is Intel certified, but they have not embedded the XMP settings on them yet. So, of course, we see that the JDEC on this is 1333 at a, D at a RAM voltage of 1.5. These are the timings at 1333. And once you do actually get a production model, it will have the XMP settings in there also. Asus OC Profile, basically you want to save one of your profiles, you like your settings, you got a good stable, stable uh, performance tune. You go ahead, you come in here, you label it, save it as Profile 1, click Save, you're done. Next time you want to go and use that profile again, you go ahead, come back in here and just load it up. ASUS Drive Expert. I leave that normally in normal mode and of course it shows you what devices are for the Drive Expert E1 and E2 and basically this in conjunction with the ASUS SSD caching E1 and E3 are the Marvel which are the 
are the two are the Marvel uh, ports, which you are going to use for the ASUS caching. And let's go ahead and we'll go back to let's go back to and it's not giving me the option to go back but in any case let's go ahead and hit escape here escape without saving of course I don't want to change my settings right now after you've done with your stuff you might want to hit F10 hit escape of course it'll re reload your BIOS at your starting point and go into Windows well that's been all and that has been our overview of the BIOS for the ASUS P9 X79 Deluxe and Pro motherboards. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Stay thirsty, my friends. For the full review, visit www.hitechlegion.com. Bye-bye.